Sometimes you may need graphical, more jazzy reports on some of the data that's on your SharePoint lists. For example, your managers or executives may be looking for data on summaries of surveys that were taken or they're looking for statuses or even if you're tracking issues through SharePoint you need statuses on uh, overdue items of items that need to be addressed. Using SQL reporting services you can create those nice reports with the SharePoint list data. In order to perform development with SQL Reporting Services and SharePoint, you need three things. The first thing you need is Visual Studio 2005 or later. The second thing you need is SQL Reporting Extensions. You can get that by installing the client tools from SQL Server. You can do that with SQL Server 2000 or SQL Server 2005. Finally, you need a SharePoint list that's either exposed anonymously or through Windows Integrated Authentication. In this demonstration, we are going to be using Visual Studio 2005 and the client tools from SQL Server 2005 to connect the SQL reporting services to the SharePoint list. In our SharePoint list, the access is Windows Integrated Authentication. To begin the project, you're going to start a new project. All you need to do is to go to File, New Project. Now where it's going to be different is you should have an option that says Business Intelligence Projects. What you want to do is you want to select Business Intelligence Project, then select the Report Server Project. In this example, we're going to call this project Sample SP Report. To begin, you first have to set up the data source. Right-click on Shared Data Sources and select Add New Data Source. You're going to fill out two tabs. In the general, you enter the name, and then the type you want to select is XML. In the connection string, you're going to enter the URL to connect to the SOAP services of SharePoint. That would be your server, site, and the VTI bin list.asmx. Remember that server is the name of your server and site is the name of your site, and that includes any subdirectories. For example, if your server is called bogus and your site is called site1, you would enter bogus slash site1 slash VTI bin lists ASMX. The next thing you need to do is you need to add a report. Right click on report and say add new item. Select the report template. Do not select report wizard, select the report template. By default, the name that it's going to give is report1.rdl. You may use that or you can change the name. In this example, we're going to call it Favorite Pythons. The next thing we need to do is create a new data set. So when we're creating a new data set, there are a few fields that you need to take a look at. The first thing you want to look is the Query tab. That is where you set up the data set in the connection query. The next tab is the fields. This is the fields you would like to display. You don't have to enter anything there. The next one is Data Options and that has some information. The next is parameters, which is where you need the parameters for connecting, and then filters. If you want to get very specific with what you want to do and what, how you want to get your data. The ones we're going to use in this demonstration is the query and the parameters. In the name tag, you can leave it as it is or you can change the name. Now in this demonstration, we're going to change the name and put a more realistic name on there. On the data source, by default it should be the data source that's selected leave the command type as text, and then enter the query string. Now this is a pretty long XML, and it's the XML that you must enter exactly the way it's written because you are using a SOAP service and you're also making some calls to Microsoft. So what I'm going to do in this demonstration, since it is some, a long XML, is I'm going to go through the demonstration and just let it go through and you can watch it. Next we need to set the parameters. There are three parameters that you need to set. The first parameter is the list name and that contains the GUID or the GUID or however you want to say it of the list that you're trying to access. 
The next is the row limit. You could put in any number you want. By default, I just leave 9999. Then finally, you want the view name, and the view name is the GUID or the GUID, however you want to say that, of the view that you want to access. You can get your list in view GUIDs from a camel tool, or you can use the GUI list. Once you finish entering the information, you should see your data appear, and this is how it's going to look similar, depend, your fields will be different. All of the fields of the data will start with the pre prefix OWS underscore. You should have some general knowledge when doing this project of how to use SQL reporting services. So in this demonstration, I'm going to do an illustration a demonstration, it's relatively quick, of using the tools of SQL reporting services to build my report um, based on my SharePoint data. So just sit back and enjoy the show. designing your report, you can take a look at what you've done. Just click the Preview tab and see the results. If you need additional resources or information, you can go to Script D and get my document that I've published on this subject. The URL is listed on the screen. You may also visit David Wise's blog, and his blog contains additional information such as troubleshooting tips. For example, if you've hit some problems while you're following along with this video, he covers some of the th common things that you would hit during this application and during the development. I hope you enjoyed this video. Goodbye.